typing. And as I start this recording, um, I want to introduce myself. I am Olivia Bryan Updegrove, and I serve as one of the ministers for families and children's at Disciples Home Missions. Um, I am also um, the head of a new type of um, collaborative initiative called Ministries Across Generations, um, which includes many of you who are on this um, call or who have been kind of connected into it. Um, it is an intentional way for the General Youth Council, for our constituency groups, for our family groups, for our young adult groups, to all be in quality communication with one another so that we're working smarter and not harder, um, and that we are intentionally able to help a variety of people, but also find ways to connect across both age and race um, and cultural lines. Um, so that is my role in all of this. I pretty much am here to try to connect dots all the time um, so that I can help lead people to what will be most helpful and influential in um, their aspects of ministry. This morning, um, we did have Diane Spleth with us, who is in charge of the children's program. Um, children's program comes from local volunteers, so it comes from the Indianapolis um, area in the Indiana region. Diane has been working with Global Ministries on the Elementary Age Children Program. And some of the things that she shared this morning is that she is using um, the most recent Vacation Bible School curricula put together by Global Ministries um, along with Global Missionaries and using that curricula to guide the morning activities for the children. She's having several different churches bring in bag lunches, and the kids for older elementary will be heading out to the zoo and other amazing activities um, throughout the week um, as they enjoy the program for them during the day set aside. Um, if you have any questions about that, we will connect you to Diane at any point. The early age children program, the preschool program, is Melissa Moulter, I think, or... I think that's how you say her name. She is also emailed out um, to those families who she knows of that are coming um, and is able to respond to some of the things that are happening there. Um, so those are the people working specifically with the preschool program and the children's program and a little bit about the activities um, that they have to participate with. Um, at this time, we have Kate Summers who is um, the moderator for the General Youth Council, as well as attending on the other side, we have, or we had Blake, oh, there's Blake, haha. <laughs> Blake, who is one of our members of the General Youth Council, and his dad was on the call this morning, and he's one of our adult leaders as well. So I'm going to let Kate um, Summers talk about what she knows about the youth section um, of the programming for General Youth Council, and then I will let Blake chime in on any insights that he has, just so that you are kind of aware of what what they're planning. Go, Kate. Okay, so um, I'm kind of in charge, or well, the GYC is in charge of the CYF programming, so that's what I'm going to focus on, but I can tell you that the Cairo will be with the CYF in the morning, and then they have their separate programming at um, during the afternoon. So on Sunday, we basically are just going to have some, like, icebreakers, and um, we have a scavenger hunt planned around the convention center, and um, so that we're going to put them in random teams, kind of. And then we have an orientation kind of so a lot of what we're we're going to try to send the CYF uh, youth out into the regular convention so that orientation time is kind of how to um, how they should go about the um, like the business sessions and um, how to navigate that and then on Monday we have workshops and our all youth activity, um, which the Cairo will be joining the CYF for that. 
um, is a dodgeball tournament. We're hoping, if not, it's going to just be kind of, uh, we're, we're going to have different games everyone can play. And then Tuesday we have icebreakers again, and then Randy Cuss is going to be doing the redesigning of youth ministry with, um, I think that's with all the youth, no, that's just with CYF in the morning. And then after that, that afternoon, the CYF have the option of having the afternoon off or they can go with the Cairo who are going to be doing different service projects. So I'm not entirely sure all of the service projects I have planned for them, but I do know that they said that if there were any CYF people who wanted to come, they could do that. And then Wednesday we have the, um, so we're going to have, we have a workshop about resourcing. Oh, no, that's when we send them out into the main assembly workshop. So they get to choose one of those and they're going to be in that. And then in the afternoon, we're going to highlight um, NBA. We have a workshop, yoga, and then we're going to have a dance party kind of as a close up to the whole um, youth program for general assembly. And that's about all I have. If there's anything you want to add, Blake? Well, we were talking about uh, the dodgeball thing and drawing up several plans. And it's more likely not dodgeball. But I mean, in, in terms of the programming of it all, that's, that's all I really have. At this time, are there any questions about um, the children's, the middle school, the high school information? Um, we may not be able to answer the, all of those questions, but we know the people who can. Um, to make sure. I, that I have a question. This is Jill Watson from Kansas City. Hi, Jill. Welcome. <clears throat> so I am bringing this is this trip for our youth is in lieu of our mission trip, and I have never personally been to General Assembly, so I cannot offer them really a ton of info on what they ought to expect. Uh, but can you, anybody tell me like how many youth, see, I'm talking CYF exclusively for our group, um, how many people are likely to be there in that age range? And, um, and I guess assembly-wide too, I guess, for perspective. I don't have any numbers right now, but I we're expecting around 200 um, youth, but we don't know if they'll all come to the programming. And then, but we're hoping that that number is up due to the um, GMP nomination. So I can't, do we know the number for the whole assembly, Olivia? Um, I don't have the numbers for the assembly. You're right. Anywhere from two to three hundred youth is what I think you all are working towards, and we're looking usually at towards 100 and 150 children. And that shifts based on um, location and interest, based on the the switch of to a new um, general minister and president. Um, so those those numbers are starting to come in as we go forward. Um, usually, assembly is probably around. At this point, of course, like anything, numbers go down, but I'd say around two to 3,000 people. But these are just estimates. I can um, talk to our registration people and let you know more specifics if you would like. Um, that's an easy thing to do. We just haven't been updated over the next, last few weeks. But Jill, okay. we're so here to we have... I'm so excited you're here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, and the kids picked this as what they wanted to do for a mission trip. On Monday, I can tell you, we signed up for all the mission opportunities I could find on the website, so they will miss the programming, other than they do intend to be back in time for dodgeball. Our boys are pretty excited about that opportunity. Um, so... Um, 
And then I have a question about worship and um, things I saw, like in the evening. Like, what does that look like? Um, I mean, you know, what can we expect? Is that? Um, yes, we will actually continue. Um, Jill, hold your questions for some of these things, just because we may answer them. We also okay. may not. Let's be honest. Okay. Um, but <laughs> we may get there. Um, and if we don't answer them as specifically, um, we will. We're here to have these conversations with you so that you are ready to come. Um, so, because we have a lot more things, especially mission-based and justice-based issues, um, that will start to come up in a minute. So you'll okay. probably end up with more questions in just a second. Okay. Um, and then we will respond to that because um, there's so much exciting stuff that is happening that you can work with both before and during the assembly with the youth that you're bringing. Um, and one of the, some of the exciting things that are actually happening and the most fun things actually comes from the young adult group. Um, the young adults are, are kind of festive um, and they're bringing some really great um, things to the experience um, and while a lot of them are still focused on issues that young adults find interesting, um, they have invited us in to participate in some ways. So next up is Clayton Summers to talk about the young adults. Thank you, Olivia. So what we have for uh, General Assembly are a couple of different events that the Young Adult Commission is going to be doing. Uh, <clears throat> our main event that we're pretty excited about will be Sunday from uh, 1 to 2.30 where we will be holding what we're calling a uh, table after the table sort of event. So after the uh, discussion at the table after uh, Sunday worship, you go out and you usually go eat and you have a conversation around the lunch table about what happened at church. So we're having another conversation after that about uh, where we're going to invite a liberal and conservative voice to come to our booth and to talk with each other about uh, their different interpretations of what Christianity means and with the main focus being that at the end of their discussions that they will emphasize the fact that we are one as disciples and even though we may believe diverse things we are all still one and unified together. So that's going to be from 1 to 2.30 on Sunday. Uh, that evening, we're going to be hosting an event with NBA Explore as well as some other divisions of the General Church at the Repository Theater, which is going to be kind of a socializing event slash uh, learning about issues that young adults might be interested in and kind of just creating a community, really, at the uh, Repository Theater. And that will be from 9 to 11. And there is a link on... MBA on MBA's webpage as well as DHM's, I believe now, uh, where you can RSVP for that event. Then we're also going to be doing a backpack mission project to bring in supplies to fill backpacks for the homeless of Indianapolis, uh, and we're partnering partnering with Wheeler Mission to do that. Uh, the time and place for filling those backpacks is yet to be determined, but things will be dropped off at uh, the uh, booths if you have them to bring, and we're going to bring places for you to uh, put those items. A list of those items have been sent out in DHM mailings, as well as can be found under the Young Adult section of DHM's website. And the other event that we're going to be sponsoring as the Young Adult Commission is a viewing of the movie 13th, which is about the uh, prison complex system in America and how it's uh, and how it uh, unequally targets African Americans and minorities and is essentially turning into a second form of slavery. And so we're going to be screening that movie and then having discussion after it to talk about uh, to just kind of have a, an event for young adults to attend. That will be happening in a DHM hotel room that uh, is either going to be Monday or Tuesday night. Uh, that's not that's still up in the air about when we can get the room, but those are our main events for the young adults at General Assembly. Thank you. Um, 
So as you can see, there's some really cool things that are happening. I also want to highlight um, that the young adults will have a photo booth area at the yeah. at the DHM booth. So <laughs> everybody come and take your crazy pictures. Um, and there's some other things to highlight at the booth in a minute, but just while I had that going. Um, the next area to kind of hit now that we've hit some of the specific ages and some of their programming behind that is there are times when we do gather all together as one, um, which sounds crazy. It, it sounds like being church to me, but um, we do have some specific things to let you know about at um, during the worship plenary sessions. As I said this morning, they're called the plenary sessions, um, but for the average person, they are when we get together to worship. Um, we have special specific places that are put together um, for our families to and our children to feel welcome. And I'm going to let Kate Epperly talk about these spaces, and then she will also begin to add in some of the other justice issues that she serves on. So she is also, she'll introduce herself. I, I will just stop talking and let Kate go. Thank you. I was going to say, you have muted me. Um, can you all hear me? I hope so. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, you're good. Good. Um, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yeah, the, um, the intention that Olivia and I and Family and Children's Ministries in general has for families and especially families with children and even very young children is that they can still have a meaningful uh, presence and participation throughout what can sometimes seem to be pretty long worship services. Um, and of course, you know, there's a sermon and, uh, you know, so what we are put together are family friendly spaces. There are going to be three of them, one of them, um, in the center up front, another one that's a little further back to the side for those who might find too much sensory bombardment up front. And then one in the back middle, uh, for toddlers and babies and, um, each of the centers will have some of the same equipment in terms of like uh, there'll be materials for elementary kids in the toddler section if a family has both <laughs> young children and elementary and there will be some rocking chairs we hope in uh, as well in the um, family friendly centers that are for the elementary children and families. These centers are meant to be for families. They're not for children unsupervised. Um, and there will be crafts, there will be um, manipulables, which will allow the children to engage with the um, worship themes and, um, and the, the scriptures. And um, the, um, some of the crafts will, be, will relate to the mission project, the backpack project, um, Saturday's worship um, and Wednesday's will include a children's moment with the uh, with the presenters presenting a um, children worship and wonder um, message, and the children will be asked to come forward with their significant uh, companions with their family and participate in that up on the stage, um, and then. The, there on Tuesday there's going to be prayer stations as part of the service. Again, we try to keep things multi-sensory so that, so that young folks can stay engaged. And there will be one prayer station just for families and we're going to be making beads, prayer beads. And each color represents a certain type of ministry that our church is engaged in. All of this, of course, is the, around the theme about unity. Um, taking from the song, you know, they'll know we are Christians by our love. And um, there will be packets, which um, Olivia and I are putting together, kind of worksheets, um, puzzles, you know, things like that, that 
can either be taken back to their seats by some of the, ch the children who might want to complete them, uh, or they can stay and work with them and with the crafts and other projects in the family uh, friendly space with their parents sitting there on the edges or in the same space. Um, I'm looking for volunteers to help with these, um, just supervise the areas with me, and um, that's a place that I imagine some of the youth will be involved and maybe young adults even. Um, I can't think of anything else, Olivia, can you, that needs to be said about that. Um, um, I will highlight it again. And just when I share my screen in a minute, just to make sure to give people another option to refer to. Um, but at this time, I want to invite Kate. Kate is also our Family and Children's Justice Minister, and she's our Interim Children Worship and Wonder Coordinator, or something like that. Um, and so I want her to take some time. She's put together some other opportunities for people to engage in justice conversations and other important conversations. So I want her to highlight a few of those. Well, I think what... Um Olivia most directly is saying that um, I'm doing a workshop on Sunday afternoon on um, homegrown faith and justice, which is um, going to be on a, a book that I helped put together some years ago, um, where you're really dealing with conversations at home around God Shalom, what that means, um, rituals um, and actions that families can take around various justice areas and, and issues of violence and how, how as Christians we're to respond. Um, and I'm going to be uh, also having a discussion time on the same topic during one of the lunch hours. Um, each, each day I'm going to be in the DHM suite which is in, at the Marriott Hotel at noon, and um, invite people to join me for one of several different discussions. And the discussion on um, on homegrown faith and justice will be um, on Wednesday. And Chris Eggert, who is the director of um, God Before Guns in Northeast Ohio and a disciples pastor, will be joining me uh, on that and um, she's also going to join me. I'm sorry, I think I misspoke. That's Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, she's going to join me um, when we talk specifically about gun violence prevention and safety for families, which is a topic that um, I think is at the core of um, a lot of what's going on in the world today that's pretty frightening for children and if it some acts don't involve guns but a lot of them do and um, how it, we can respond as Christians in a way that trusts God and, and yet is wise uh, as well. So then on Monday I'm doing a lunch thing on children worship and wonder and it's for both the trainers that are there and any other interested persons who want to learn more about it in general. And I'm calling it a bag lunch, but I don't know where you'll be able to get bag lunches around there, but if you want to bring them on up and talk, that'd be great. Um, what else? I guess I will be at the booth and do a book signing with my husband. Olivia's got a schedule of a number of us who are authors who will be signing books, and um, the one that we'll be signing on is uh, Theology According to Winnie the Pooh. Um, <laughs> And I'll be bringing resources to the booth um, about, about a number of justice activities in which I participate on behalf of the denomination, um, which includes um, Phase United to Prevent Gun Violence, um, a, a ecumenical interfaith group dealing with rights and responsibilities for people with um, who are disabled, um, Bridge of Hope Ministries, Friendship Ministries, a number of the ministries that are ecumenical, but they really deal with health and well-being and justice for families. So um, I think that's it. Oh, the rally. Do you want me to talk about that now? Um, I, I'm going to pause you for a second just to switch okay. up voices.
um, because I think the rally is also really important, so I want to make sure they hear you. So I'm going to actually take over for a second, and when I get to the rally in this, I'm going to let you then add a voice in so that people don't get tired of listening to my um, voice. I'm good with that, totally. <laughs> I know, I can tell. It is definitely Kate's bedtime. She's like, let's well, keep going. Don't tell anybody, but I have a glass of wine in my hand, too. <laughs> if I met Kate... <laughs> anyway, welcome to having fun with the, the craziness of ministries across generations. Um, at this point, I am going to try to share with those of you who are on computers my screen um, because ultimately we are throwing a lot of things at you and I want you to be able to go back and look up things. Um, I've been spending a lot of time collaborating with a number of people so that I can make sure that you I can connect you to the information that is most helpful for whatever age group you have. This is currently the updated front page for our family and children's website. This is actually the interactive section in the Disciples Home Missions booth area for ministries across generations. That area will include the Young Adult Commission, the Disciples Youth Ministry Network, the General Youth Council, an actual family-friendly area for people to hang out of all ages. There will be crafts that are going to be done along with the backpacks that are happening, and that's also where we're going to have the book signings. Um, but if you want to go ahead and kind of learn about this ministry and not do the touchscreen computer when you're there, then you can go ahead and look here. If you scroll down, this is your one-stop shop that I've been trying to collaborate with so that anybody who has questions, um, I'm trying to get this out of the way for you. Um, anyone who has questions about something that deals directly with these areas of ministries at General Assembly can come here and get connected and linked over. Um, for the last two years, we've had our first Disciples 5K, 10Ks um, virtually throughout the country. We've had seven to 800 people um, participate in these and we've raised a little less than twenty thousand dollars for the disciple mission fund on Tuesday we are encouraging everybody and I know there's quite a few of you to you on this group to wear your 5k and 10k shirts and medals um, to support disciples home mission and to show that youth and children and other people are truly invested into this experience so share with everybody to wear your 5k 10k t-shirts that you know that have participated while they're at the assembly and you can see that that's noted right here. Um, here we have highlighted the webinars that are currently happening and this will be a place where I link you over to our YouTube station um, for people who want to hear this conversation but weren't able to be a part of it. Um, if you look here this tells you a little bit more about what is happening in the Disciples Home Mission booth area. Um, one of the exciting things that is happening is that Family and Children's and Young Adult Ministry and Youth Ministry covers such a wide variety of areas and we have some amazing authors um, and we actually today have added um, a musician, um, but I haven't updated it, um, who are dealing with real life issues that happen in faithful ways. Um, the update is that Nancy Cordova, who is an amazing um, musician and part of Obra Hispania, is going to be coming to share her music and her CD called, um, I think it's Migrant, I don't know if it's, anyway, it talks about her experience as someone who's worked a lot um, on the border and with the issues around that, and she will come and play and sing for us. You can see that Bob Cornwall and Catherine Wills Percy are going to be meeting together to talk about issues and studies around marriage. Tabitha Johnson, We'll also be talking about issues around um, infertility and what that is like for families. Um, Susan Diamond has a new book out that is for upper elementary and younger middle school, and she'll be doing a reading and a signing um, Sunday from 1 to 2, which will be really exciting. Bill Spangler Dunning, who's the regional minister for the upper Midwest, has written some just fun family stories and memoirs to share. You can see Bruce and Kate are on there. Um, useful preaching is Rich Volts right here, um, who will be sharing, and Rich and Tabitha are both part of a panel to discuss um, all of the issues around infertility at a workshop on Sunday afternoon. Aaron Wathen, I'm going to move this over, 
recently um, published More Than Words, 10 Values for the Modern Family, and Lee Hall Moses has two books, as so does Catherine Rolls Percy, um, to talk about just parenting in this modern age as well. Mary Alice Dew um, directly works with um, some of the mental illness and things that happen around that. She will be doing a signing on Saturday from 2 to 3, but she will be at the DHM area throughout the assembly. When we don't have book signings happening, we are having our children's worship and wonder trainers um, who will be telling stories and ready to talk to people, and that will soon be posted. Um, let me get back to this page. Um, that'll be posted right in this section to for those of you who either want to participate with the conversation at Kate's hotel room or want to know more, um, you can come to the booth during this time. They are amazing people, always open to discussion. Um, and so I'm going to give you a little bit of a break from me, um, but right before I do that, over here, as you prepare children's and families for different programs, this, th these are some links and connections and information so that people know what is expected of them in the worship times with their children and family and ways to um, prepare and to connect in. If you want to know the specifics for the backpacks, that is there as well. Um, but I want Kate to kind of, you can see here Kate lifted up when her meetings are at the Marriott Suite, um, and that is listed right here. Um, these are some of the workshops that you may want to note that are happening, um, but I want her to lift up this part, the Disciple Rally for Family Justice. Yeah, if you could pull up the poster, that would be great. Um, the link is on that page. Yeah, um, Sharon Stanley Ray, who is our Immigration and Refugee Minister, and I uh, conceived of a rally um, and there, this is going to be on Saturday, so some of you may not be here in time, but um, Saturday afternoon, probably gather around 3.30 in room uh, 103, and uh, march together. It's only a matter of a few blocks with carrying signs and banners or whatever to the State House, and we have a series of people, including Kate Summers, who will speak. Um, about the causes that they care about, justice causes. It's called Disciples Rally for Family Justice. And if you go to the bottom, you'll see the um, a number of different groups that have bought in on it. <laughs> there we go. Um, and um, because right now families are just really at risk everywhere, not just refugee families uh, stranded across the world, um, but um, our own with you know, health issues and housing and school and everything. So um, we just really wanted to stand up and say disciples care. And it seems like I believe Reverend Barber will talk at the end of it about the intersectionality of, you know, the faith and justice issues, issues of racial justice, um, justice for Native Americans, you know, peace building, LGBTQ. You can see it here on the poster. Anyway, so I encourage you to come, and we're hoping the youth will um, help make signs on Friday if they're around. And um, there will also be a prayer vigil for uh, that uh, DJAN, uh, Disciples Justice, DJAN, what action group, will be uh, holding, and that'll be Monday evening. Uh, and that actually might make a difference on when you show the movie 13 because I would think some of the same people might want to go to, to the vigil. But anyway, um, this is um, for my ministry. I, I have a blog um, that I just do, um, as, well, if I do it not weekly, but probably every other week, try to highlight activities just as seeking disciples can participate in if they choose um, both action and ed advocacy and education. Um, and, uh, you know, this is an important part of who we are. It always has been. So, um, you know, just invite you all to come by the booth and see some of the literature I'm bringing and then also join us for the rally. Thank you, Kate. Um, I also want to encourage you, as I go back to this, if you look under some of these headings, if you look at Vacation Bible Schools, you will be able to see um, 
and link over to the program that is happening by the children. Um, you can easily click down here if you want a list for the backpacks as we go forward. Um, on that front page where you first got in, our home page, you will be easily able to connect and keep updated with Kate's Justice um, movement. So a lot of these things that we are talking about, this page and that home page, will lead you back always um, for more information. And at any time, if you have questions, there's a lot of information that we work on here. We are here to answer and respond um, to help guide you as we go forward. Um, I want to highlight right over here the biggest um, thing that I've been working on, which is very different. Um, historically in the past, on Sunday mornings, there has been um, what is called the youth worship that happens at the convention hall. That is not happening this time. Um, because there has been lots of conversation about the fact that while there are um, times and moments where like does love to go to like, young adults need time with young adults, children need time with children. Um, as a young mom, I need time with people with crazy toddlers. Um, but there is also a time where we are called to be the community together and not really segregated in worship. Um, but instead intentional about finding ways to worship across all ages and across all cultures and um, races. So the General Youth Council, along with conversation with the, the Young Adult Council um, and the Ministries Across Generations group, along with the region, um, are working really hard to be one on the Sunday morning worship experience because everyone else, there are about 40 different places you can go um, to listen to speakers and to enjoy worship on this morning. Um, this afternoon, so this is different, so you all pay close attention because this has totally changed up within the last, you know, six hours from this morning's webinar. Um, but I spoke with one of the General Youth Council adults, Jeff, um, who is their wonderful technology person, and we are working together. He plans to monitor the primary um, hashtag feeds for Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter during the morning session so that online you can share your quotes, your experiences, your pictures, what you hear, and we are intentionally, in some ways, you get to go worship and be a part of things everywhere. Um, which is kind of cool. So in some ways, we want to encourage you to have your phones. Um, and we are going to start advertising that information so that people are aware of the hashtags and things to help keep us united throughout the event on social media and to really be able to share as one together. There are four worship opportunities on Sunday morning that have intentionally said we are doing things for the groups of young adults, youth, children, and families. Now they all get to choose what they do in different ways and they are being led creatively by the youth and some of their leaders and some of the young adults. So I have given over some control so that they can put together what works. The churches that have intentionally said they will do this are Linwood Christian Church, where I will be speaking, Speedway Christian Church, where Michael Kinneman will be speaking, and Avon Christian Church um, that is having a global missionary there to speak. All of these are options for worship that have intentionally said they are working um, across different ages and lines to um, lift up what it means to really answer to all ages. At the convention center, if you do not want to leave the comforts of your convention center home, Obra Hispania has opened their doors to us. And actually, Jessica, who is on this call, um, is the leader for um, introducing and creatively thinking through options. I mean, in so many ways, our Hispanic church is already intergenerational and super fun, and we're going to have amazing ways to kind of engage in that and have conversation. But she um, will be the one, the pinpoint person to put that together um, with Lori and to just give me the feedback so that we can make sure we're not only having conversations across generational lines of intentional ways to worship, but across cultural lines. 
Um, does Jessica have anything to add to that? Is she still here? Yep, she's at the bottom. Let me make sure she's not muted. Oh, I think you're good. Oh, she's not. Good job. Hello. Jessica, <laughs> do you have anything to add at this point? If not, that's okay. Just kidding. I, I don't. <laughs> She's also right now in her Leadership Academy stuff in Lexington, super busy, but she's the one who will help be leading that. Um, we also, and Jill, pay attention, because I think I need you. Um, we also have work and worship opportunities, because as Jill pointed out earlier, and these are for families, these are for youth, these are for anyone who wants to, all of these, um, who wants to do some sort of mission work as part of their worship experience on Sunday morning. We have two Ronald McDonald houses that are ready um, to have people come. Um, I have means to buy the food. We have children worship and wonder people paired up with the GYC leader. Um, and we can take 15 to 20 people. Um, and so if you are interested to bring your family to one of those, to bring um, your youth group to one of those. All you have to do is contact me and I will put you in touch with the GYC pinpoint person for that. But it will also be a worship experience and discussion opportunity. Um, we probably will not have enough for the senior day daycare Eastgate, so I'm gonna have to update that as I get more information from everybody. If you wanna stay at the convention center, but you still want to kind of talk through sign a mission and learn some different things. Um, there's an opportunity to learn more about the backpacks and what is happening with the Wheeler Center. In this opportunity, we have several children worship and wonder trainers who are on this group. We also have a liturgical dancer who's on this group. And they are creatively starting because it's young adults and youth. So th they'll have it together, hopefully, by July 9th. But they are starting to talk through... Um, for those who want kind of a worship experience at the convention center, um, what they want to do so that there's a catch place for those who don't really want to worship at that time, who need a break, but still want to do something and find a way to have communion together. And then, of course, continue to share all of these. And then you can see all of the morning worship opportunities are here. You are invited and welcome to go to any of them and just continue to share so that everybody can hear about the cool things that everyone is doing. Those are some of the primary things, the things that are happening at the booth, meetings that are happening, workshops that are happening. Um, we will have a Snapchat filter happening through the GYC. Um, there will be scavenger hunts and ways to learn about all of these initials that we keep lifting up. You can be part of a march. You can be part of a rally. You can be um, sensory oriented. It's an exciting time to come and have opportunities to connect. So now, Jill, I'm coming back at you and anyone else um, to ask more questions or for me to help you make connections that will really help you. Anybody got some quality questions? Let me make sure you're unmuted. I can unmute you. Um, this is Jill. I do have a few questions. I feel like they're kind of... Um... Real tactical, though. That's okay. One, I, I will. I am interested in um, the Ronald McDonald House opportunity. I want to talk with my kids on Sunday, and then let you know. We had already talked about worshiping in community, and you know all that, but hadn't made any firm plans about it. Um, so I want <clears throat> to share that opportunity with them. They are. That generally is kind of right up their alley, so I think yeah, there's a decent chance they would like to help their at Ronald right. McDonald House. Who is on this call, so ultimately you'll probably be connected okay. to Kate soon. Okay. Okay, good. And that was going to be my next question is how do I contact people who are on this call that I wanted to follow up with? And that's a wonderful question. And... Mm -hmm. If you come back to this Go ahead. website, I have two more questions after that. Oh yeah, keep holding on. If you come back to this website, okay. you can see there's a contact us section. There's also mm -hmm. about us, which will give you the staff. And if you want to email me or Kate, um, I am at church camp next week, 
so Kate may also, and we both have a list along with um, most of the other people all on this list, um, to be able to connect you with others who may be helpful. Okay, great. And, and that also includes Brooks Barrick, who is the primary person working with volunteering. So as you have questions with that, we are also engaged in conversation with him because of the Sunday morning stuff. Okay. <clears throat> so my, my next question is about <clears throat> um, booths. I've read several times, visit our booth. Um, how many booths are there and how much time does it take to do all that? Um, Kate, is the scavenger hat booth oriented? Uh, yes, for the most part it should be. Okay, so we will have accomplished that with the scavenger hunt that's on the youth agenda? Uh, yeah, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be under kind of a time restraint, so that might give you an idea of what booths you want to go back to. Okay. Um, so. Um, so some of the things, the booths are open, um, and you can see, if you actually go to the basic list, hold on, back, um, if you go back to the basic list of the General Assembly, because you can connect over pretty easily, so you go down here to one, sorry, I'm sneaking through the back door because that's the quickest way to do it for me, but the GA Disciples, Schedule. This will give you a list of all the things that are happening. Um, but if you go here to the basic schedule, you can see um, and be able to kind of start to compare with the youth schedule and some of the open and the free times that you have when the um, booths will be accessible and open. Exhibit hall hours are listed right here. Um, and so it's open a good chunk of the time. One of the areas youth are usually really interested in is the college area. So there will be a section of all the different disciple colleges as well as the higher education leadership ministries, um, which Jordan, who's on this white, is actually part of higher education leadership ministries as well. Um, and so he will be at that booth. Um, we also, oh, I started pushing things, sorry. Um, so, there, and then all of the different groups that represent part of the church are all going to be in that. We specifically, this group of people that you are talking to, all pretty much fall under, for the most part, with some quality connections, Disciples Home Missions. So we will be with, and that house is like 26 different ministries or 28 different ministries. Um, so we will be hanging out over there, but there's global ministries, there are a bunch of different sellers, there's a book area. Um, it's a fun place to be, like a big convention hall area where you'll go around and meet and see and learn a lot and be totally overwhelmed and get lots of giveaways. Okay. <clears throat> What's your next question? Um, so the next question is also kind of tactical. So generally on a mission trip, I do not ever leave my kids. I'm always doing exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so this sounds like it might not be that. Like do leaders come to CYF stuff or do I leave them there and go do something else? That would be more of a Kate question. Is she still here? Um, so I would... Usually, you can just leave your kids and go do whatever you'd like. Um, I don't know if you're taking CYF and Cairo or just CYF. The Cairo, you do have to sign in and out, but the CYF, um, they can go. You, you just have to drop them off. We don't, there's no sign-in sheet for that. Okay. No, they're all, they're all CYF. Um, okay. <laughs> And, well, one of our things is that we're going to send them into the main mission, or into the main assembly to do, like, the discussion with the nominee for GMP, so they can meet up with you then, um, and that kind of thing, if you want to work um, about when to meet up with your kids. Okay. Um, 
Historically, my when I've served, it can be kind of a combo. You can do as much with your kids as you want or as not. There's opportunities and workshops a lot of times for the leaders as well. Um, a lot of times I've prepared my youth when I brought them to remember it's the difference is you're going almost like to the capital. Um, you know, there's a really cool video you can kind of show them even ahead of time about how does a resolution become a resolution. Um, so that they begin to understand kind of like how does a bill become a bill? Well, we have a how does a resolution become a resolution for Disciples of Christ um, to talk about how the business of the church is done and how some of the leadership is. So it, it's an, an educational opportunity in a lot of ways as well, um, which doesn't always make it fun, um, but does make it really informative as they start to connect the dots of how we do bigger ministries and mission. Does that help? Mm -hmm. It does. Where can I find that video? I um, Let me pause my thing and I'll go hunt it down, but I don't want to hunt it down with you all watching. Hold on. Any other questions? I don't have any others. But I really appreciate this opportunity to ask them. This helps a lot. Thank you. Any other comments or thoughts? If for some reason, Jill, I don't know you directly, but if any of you have direct questions and for some reason are not able to unmute or anything, we will continue to connect you in. Um, okay. On that note, um, I would like someone to offer themselves to pray us out as I look for this video so that I can share that kind of with you at the end. Um, is anybody willing to do that? Don't all jump at once. I can do it. Go for it. Hi. Please prepare yourself for prayer. Hey God, thank you for this amazing opportunity to bring us all together and to answer any questions you can tie up any of these answers out to this. Uh, please make this an amazing General Assembly. Please uh, have any doubts here tonight settled and have us meet in a few months and let it be an amazing General Assembly. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, I'm looking for the video, but everyone else is welcome to go ahead and disappear unless you haven't seen the exciting um, resolution video, because it is kind of fun. <laughs> As we move forward. I am looking. Resolution. I'm going to look up video. If I don't find it soon, I can also um, ask Sherilyn Williams so that she... Hmm. Uh, Jill, let me search that for you. What is your email? Or are you able to email me real quick so that I can, um, um, from the page before, so that I can then respond and email you back? Sure. Okay, let me turn off the Yeah, eye. I can send you an email. Wonderful. Let me stop recording. Stop recording. Did my children fall asleep on the couch? Um, let me show you where that is. Here you go. There's my email.
Does that work? It does. Thanks. So just email me and I'll find Thank that you. for you. Um, and if you have any other questions or things, I'm here. Carolyn, always here for you and your kids. Plus, um, I know Bruce and the Eureka kids are there. Jackie, thanks for all your kids. And I will talk to you all later. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a good night.